In this case, for correcting the upper shifted mini line, I did the extraction of one molar. Let me show to you how I deal uh, with this type of treatment when I need to do the extraction and close the space with loops. So, in uh, her case, she had this, this asymmetric positioning of upper uh, canines because of uh, asymmetric extraction in her previous treatment. And what we had here is because of the extraction of the first molar in this side, the midline shift towards that side. And for treating this case, I plan for doing this extraction. But remember, everything must be based on diagnosis. And then you go to the treatment planning. And after that, we will apply the best biomechanic that we can. In this case, my choice for closing the space was using a loops for that. You know that I love loops and it was well indicated for this because I wanted to do things with more control, especially because I had a very large space to be closed. So I used the loop and for activating the loop, I usually use the geometry number six, which for me is better for controlling and I deal with the anchorage, not, dealing, not doing the asymmetric positioning of the loop, of the, 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 the V-shape, but uh, mainly using anchorage for that. So I use the specific anchorage that I need. And in this case, I didn't need much anchorage because I wanted to close the space from mesial to distal and from distal to mesial. Let me show that to you. Look at this. Uh, first of all, I had to give a good over jet to the case so I could do the retraction. We initiated the case just doing the leveling and aligning. And it was, uh, since the, the, the process of diagnosis, it, it was planned to do the extraction of this upper molar in the right side. But before that, I needed to give uh, an over jet by means of applying the correct torque for this. As a curiosity, I applied the torque with TMA in cases like this because I don't want to force too much the bracket and uh, the TMA can apply good torque when we wait, when we wait a little, uh, we wait sometimes so the torque is expressed. Look at this, so uh, I'm closing the space using the delta loop. The delta loop is activating geometry six in a symmetric V shape so I can have both in posterior segment, the uprighting of the molar as we are closing the space. And in anterior segment, we are applying a torque using this concept of the V shape. And we try to cancel the vertical components with that. You see, so after a while, what we had is the retraction of anterior segment and the closure, the, closure, the space closure from posterior to anterior and anterior to posterior. So as you can see, it is very fast. And uh, I use the IZC to help me to close the space uh, because I wanted to do the retraction with the IZC in position to help the retraction. And at some point, what happened was this. I did a retraction of anterior teeth and we had a contact between upper anterior and lower anterior teeth. And I needed to stop the retraction so I can gain more torque or over jet to go on with the retraction. What did I do in this case? Well, I had some, some options. I could just stop the mechanics and go with the continuous arch wire mechanics, but I chose not to do that because I wanted to have the, the uprighting of this molar, which needed a moment in a clockwise direction. And I needed to have the torque or the moment in a counterclockwise direct direction in anterior segment. So if I want a clockwise moment in a counterclockwise moment, as I wanted in this case here, I can apply a two couple system for that. I can apply one moment in the molar and the other moment in the incisor so I can correct the overjet and I can upright the molar at the same time. So what I did here was this. I used a TMA strip activated again in geometry six, symmetric V, same magnitude of activation in posterior and anterior segment 
we can measure that, we can do the visual way of measuring, but I prefer to use the dynamometer to measure the force. So I have similar forces, equal forces in both segments, equal vertical forces, and moments of the same magnitude also. So I had two moments and the same magnitude with the same magnitude, and I also have two uh, vertical components in each side that were um, canceling each other because they were acting uh, in the same body. We, they, they were acting at the same body. So in this case, because they are collinear and they are uh, in the same direction and opposite senses, so those, force, those vertical forces, they can be canceled. And we just have the moments, which we want. I want the moment both in posterior and anterior segment. The, the, the moment of the couple is going to generate a rotation at some body that will make the center of rotation be the center of resistance. But if we cinch back like this here, we don't allow this crown to go distal, we are actually changing the center of rotation of this type of movement for closer to the bracket, closer to the tube in this case. So what I wanted, I wanted just the crown to be in, in, in its position while the root is forcing to be uprighted forward. And this is what I wanted in this case. And after a while, what we expected, this is interesting because I did this video before the movement take place, before the movement really occurred. And when I came back with the patient, I have the video one month later, I saw the case like, wow, it was very fast. The moment really took place and I correct the over jab and I operated the molar very fast because we have a very precise moment being applied in this case, which is very difficult when we apply just the torque. The torque, yes, is a good choice. It's a good uh, way of correcting anterior uh, over jab, correcting anterior inclination, anterior teeth inclination. But this moment here is more effective, is more effective. And uh, I can't, of course, take too much time here explaining everything about it, about the torque, about the moment, two couple systems. It's just for you to understand that, that, that there is another way to dealing with this. And in this case, using this strategy, we could correct very fast the movement that we needed. So look at this. And this is the day that I applied the couple, the two couple system. In this very day, we did a video just showing with the patient. She was very happy because she was seeing that the case, the case was going fast. The correction of the midline, which was her chief compliant, was going fast. And she allowed me to do the video with her in my chair, my dental chair. So we did that. And one month later, look at this. Let me go back. So we had this block movement being blocked in the chair segment because of the contact between upper and lower teeth. And uh, one month later, I had this, keeping the molar with the same space because it was cinched back the arch, the strip of TMA. And now we have an over jab in the chair segment, allowing me to go further with the retraction. So I stopped this mechanics and I went on with the retraction using the same strategy again and closing the space and retracting. And then a little bit, one month later, we had this. And the last time I saw this patient, I used elastics for giving the intricus patient, but I'm still applying torque here, you know? I'm still applying the torque because I want to have a little bit of buckle inclination of upper teeth. And I hope next appointment, this patient come back with a good intercuse patient because she's really compliant and she loves to see the, the treatment going, going fast. And uh, let's move on so you can see the case in another view. So last time, last consultation, that's what I, what I saw. Here we have before treatment, and uh, we did the extraction of this molar. We went on with the retraction using the loop, 
and I wanted to help the correction of the rotation of the motor. You see, we're having a pretty good correction of the road, a pretty good movement of the motor with uh, the space being closed, very controlled, uh, a very controlled movement, but I wanted to increase the correction of the rotation because the force here, as we see, is being applied in the buckle side. So there is a tendency for rotation of the molar and I wanted to avoid it. You see, let me go back here. It's good, good movement, good control, but I wanted more. I wanted to correct this rotation, a little bit of a rotation. And I also used the force applied by the palatal side. So I can have the rotation of the molar at the same time I'm closing the space. So another photograph, another month. So four months and a half after initiating the space closure, we had this view almost closed and we are closing a gap of 10 millimeters or more than that on an upper first molar with a big crowd. So you see that's very effective, very effective. And it's not much force. There's no need for giving to this system too much force. We want more control of the movement than uh, force, than, than speed. And we have both here. The speed of the treatment, the speed of the correction is a very fast correction in my point of view. And we had also the control of this type of movement. So in these cases, we have a faster movement based on the region of uh, acceleratory phenomenon. We know that is very fast, but if we use this way, we start the movement right after the extraction, we'll see that it goes very, very fast. And here we have it. Five months after space closure being initiated. And here we have before treatment and uh, now, with the correction of the midline almost done, okay? And when we compare before and after, we see that we are in the right track, in the right track. Using this strategy, we can do things faster in our treatment. But believe me, believe me, if you don't understand what you are seeing, if you don't plan correctly, if you don't focus on the diagnosis and treatment planning, everything may go wrong. So take care, take care and study that a lot. I have a course on that, you all, you, uh, you probably know this. And this is the course that I really love because it's based on this, on the diagnosis and treatment planning. And this is the basics of orthodontics. And after this, this is why I had two different courses. After this, we must apply the correct, the best concepts using the good biomechanics for that, the correct biomechanics for that. And this is the case that shows this. Very fast treatment with the correct way of seeing the patient, planning for the treatment based on the diagnosis and uh, biomechanics being applied in the correct way. Okay, so that's it guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed this presentation and I'm always here for you if you want to ask more things about this case or other cases. Uh, I'll be here for you. Bye-bye.